Oh, baby. The winners. Look at that blue bar. We haven't seen the blue bar in forever. What is up, everybody? Welcome into the winner's lounge. Let's go. Oh, what a fail vote. What a fail. You you mute yourself. You mute yourself. You're doing silent air horns right now. There you go. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That is right. Team Serbia gets a win. Their first of Eurobasket, the opener, and they cover 24. We're going to break it all down. A very fantastic cover, man. Honestly, this is why sports gambling is so fun and blowout wins because at the end, I'm at the edge of my seat. I'm sweating it out along with all of you. Serbia gets the win, though. Lots of stuff to talk about. Very interesting game. We're presented, as always, by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Use promo code DNVR. Whenever you sign up, I got the fellas. Another podcast with the fellas down below. What a treat. Look at you, man, matching hat and shirt. It's Brennan Vote. That's right. A lot of maroon. A little international hoops this morning as a treat, then this early afternoon as a treat, and a show with the fellas. This is my perfect day. <laughs> Come on. This is a great little Friday we have going on, and we go right into our weekend after this, a three-day weekend. Uh, over there, the man in an undisclosed location. It looks different. It looks like a different undisclosed location. What's going on here, Wind? I can't hear you, man. I'm just, <laughs> just counting money. Over here, man. This guy. <laughs> this mother. This. Oh, look at that. Oh. He's making it rain. Unbelievable. Uh, I wanted to talk trash to you so bad, Wid. I, so. I was so ready. I know you did. I know you guys <laughs> wanted to talk trash. You even put it in the slack. Can you believe Harrison bet that cover? That's a direct <laughs> quote. Oh, my God. And so for people that aren't watching, I... We'll get, actually, should we just do the fast right recap right away? Should we just get straight into this? I'll, I'll tell everybody that we're going to be talking about this game for Serbia. We're also going to be breaking down the, the Donovan Mitchell trade, which is a big trade. Obviously, it pertains to the Denver Nuggets because of Utah. All in on their rebuild now. And then also just kind of it's interesting for the NBA. Um, so we'll get to that a little bit later. But we're going to start with the fast recap. Oh, crap. I moved computers and now I don't have it up in front of me. Um, but I can start off of memory here to, to begin. The first one is that Mulatinov is, was out today. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Um, apparently, he caught a cold, so he was out. Um, this was a laugher. Netherlands, I think, um, like ranked 49th or something in the world. You know, Serbia, obviously, up there near the top. So this was uh, – I'm, I'm still glad I see everybody. I'm all into Eurobasket. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but Mulatinov was off, so I kind of thought – one of the main storylines coming into tonight was how much is Jokic going to play? When Milutinov was out, I was like, oh, crap. He might actually end up having to play more, um, but it wasn't the case. Jokic, absolutely in his bag early, fellas. Do you remember the first, like, 45 seconds of this game? Sure do. Oh, Jokic yeah. was everywhere, getting buckets. He had a nice little, like, five-part combo move. It was sexy as hell. It was incredible. He's just all over the place. And the guy tonight, Micic, uh, Vasa Micic, absolutely slinging some dimes. I thought he was fantastic tonight. He might make an appearance later on the show. Uh, you know, he might earn a, an award here in a little bit. He was fantastic. I think he had seven assists in his very first stint alone. Um, and he kept it up the whole game. Had big passes, big playmaking uh, throughout all when, when Serbia needed him most. And Serbia started out 25-13 to 13 when Jokic went to the bench. That was pretty much the, the difference. Like the first start of the game, they're up 12 points. I think they got it up to 14 eventually. And the rest of the game was just like, the intensity lowered dramatically. Sure. That was my read on it. I thought the game was like nice and Serbia came out in a rhythm. And then it was like, this is too easy, man. And they completely lost focus. Um, Micic, Lucic, and Jokic all came out in the first quarter, which is something we hadn't seen a whole lot of in the World Cup qualifiers and some of the tune-up games. Usually there's one of those guys that was on the court at all times, and they went with none of them for a while. Maybe that was part of what kind of broke it up. Serbia was owning the offensive glass with the second unit, though, especially against the zone. Netherlands went zone against that second unit, daring them to shoot. They made some shots early, but mostly they just grabbed a bunch of offensive rebounds. Jokic came back in up 12. Really strong half from Micic, 51-38 Serbia. Everything looks good. But then the second half came, and it was a classic Jokic slumber. Not No intensity. <laughs> Everybody on their – this was the most predictable, like, third quarter I could possibly really imagine. Was. Jokic as long as we have. Um, completely flat-footed. And Jokic, by the way, his rebounding, I thought, in this game was not so great. There was a couple, like, offensive rebounds he gave up where it was like, come on, man, like, that's – you're just not doing your job. Kind of, a, I think, a lack of focus. 
And then he gets a technical foul. We got the full Jokic. Intensity, oh. flat-footed, angry, and then dominant again down the stretch as a response. It was the full Jokic. Um, that worthy Dijon guy, I've never heard of him, Ooh. but he was absolutely cooking. Certified bucket. Netherlands caught fire from three. This is one of those things where you play with fire, you, you can get burned. Netherlands caught fire, and for a second you thought, oh, God, they're going to have to grind out a win against an insanely hot team now, aren't they? Not the case. Micic, I thought, was the one who came back in, settled things down, uh, and made a bunch of big plays. And although they were only up like 8-10 to 10 all game, they closed the game on an enormous run and make Harrison win a rich man. Um, <laughs> they were up like 12 points with, I don't know, three minutes to go. Somehow they win by yeah. 24. That was the game. What did I miss, fellas? Well, well you missed you missed the very end how yeah. they covered. Um, <laughs> walk walk us through it, money man. So, Serbia was up twenty three, right? And yeah. then uh, Netherlands calls a timeout to set up a well, final they were up 24. play. They were up twenty four. Oh, right, right. they're up twenty four. They're up twenty four. Uh, Netherlands calls a timeout to set up a play with six seconds left, sideline out of bounds. Netherlands coaches in the huddle. It, it looks like he's drawn up the greatest play of all time. It, it looks like he's <laughs> reaching into his back pocket. He's bringing it up some, speech. you know, bringing up the play that he's been saving for this exact moment. They come out of the timeout and then the clock just runs out. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I kind of missed like the camera missed it. All of a sudden, the game was over. Plus 23 hits. <laughs> Very anti It was like so climatic and then anticlimactic. Like the whole thing yeah. built up to Serbia getting that lead and getting it at the last bit. And you're like, oh, my God, it all comes down to this last play. You get a timeout. And then, yeah, I don't even know what happened. They're just like, well, yeah, we're not trying to He's score. Screaming. <laughs> He's screaming, I don't care about today. This play is for tomorrow execute this play for tomorrow he's screaming give me everything you got he's going full movie sports coach on him. <laughs> and then they then they went popovich in game seven oh and man you're this right this is a bad beat for me i took the under i'm happy for a win i'm <laughs> i'm devastated you you made a bet that was the opposite of the DraftKings sportsbook <laughs> kick pick of the week yeah and it was a good bet right up until it wasn't and oh I hate, my god i hate this Ugh. Unbelievable. It honestly is why sports gambling is so fun because the end of that game was kind of like, all right, what is there to pay attention to? And all of a sudden you look at the scoreboard and you're like, all right, there's a chance. And then it became like a buzzer beater. It was incredible. Um, but my, if I had, we'll go to big takeaways now from this game. This part of the reason I hated the bet, Harrison, you won it. But part of the reason I hated it is I've just watched Jokic so many times against teams that don't challenge him at all. And it's always the same script, dominant start, completely fall asleep in the second half and you end up winning by less than what you should. Now that didn't happen in large part because the Serbian bench unit that closed the game rallied back. But Jokic tonight, I thought could have done whatever he wanted. Just didn't seem like he wanted to do nearly all that much. And I don't really blame him. You win by 20. It doesn't these games, you just got to survive and get through. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a bet on Jokic. It was a bet on the depth of Serbia. Cause I, I thought this yeah. would be a blowout. Um, I just thought Serbia's bench was going to be that much better than, you know, the Netherlands bench, which which is yeah. what happened. But no, it, it it was a classic yoke game. Like you said, he came out, established his dominance. Like it looked like after the first three possessions, four possessions of this game that they could just give him the ball every time and he would score. Like maybe that could have right. happened. And then, you know, takes his foot off the gas came out in the second half just grumpy just pissed off <laughs> like that was a total grumpy technical like he he didn't get a couple calls he missed a three and then just boom the technical yeah classic yoke te technical for sure what it did really you make was. of his what do you make of his game tonight vote were you impressed unimpressed neither yeah i mean neither like I, it was obviously so impressive to start the game but nothing less than you'd expect or nothing more than you expect right i mean he was just dominant and and he should be in that matchup i didn't think his intensity was high today don't think yeah. it had to be before anyone gets mad at me but you know we talked a lot about even in the world cup qualifier games his defense was looking really good and then tonight obviously mm -hmm. that didn't seem to be a high priority for him didn't have to be but i you know We've seen him dominate the glass as well and play at a higher level defensively than he did today. No harm, no foul, not worried about it at all. But it is a reminder 
you know, when you do things like pick Jokic for MVP in events like this, he will, of course, be one of the three best players in the tournament. Will he be deployed and will he care at the right spots to go ahead? I mean, Giannis is not going to let his foot off the gas in this. Right, tournament. right, right. So, I mean, yeah, I guess I guess, I guess we know Jokic isn't gunning for the Euro basket. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, Giannis had this ridiculous close to the game this morning and yeah. Jokic, you know, uh, he's he's cool with letting him have his shine. Right. And yeah. here's the thing. If Yoke had to come in and close a game like that, all confidence he could have didn't need to today. So but that's a big finish by Serbia, as uh, as we should point out, you know, points matter in this group stage. I don't think they're going to matter, though, for Serbia. Like, I, I mean, not, unless Serbia yeah, gets into a not. tie and so some kind of tie for first place or whatever, which I just don't anticipate happening. Probably um, not. I think same. they're going to win a lot of games like this. It is noteworthy, though, that they do play tomorrow morning at 930 a.m. Mountain Time. Yes. So it's like this this tournament is weird because it's not just a back to back, but they play early tomorrow. This is like the New York back to back where you have like the morning game for some reason the second night. So this one is a little bit, you know, and rightfully so, not a ton of minutes for mo most of the key guys. And that was by design. The fact that they still covered is it tells you all you need to know. My other notes for Jokic, though. <laughs> We, I keep talking about the quickness with him. That move he had, it reminded me, what was the, what was the team they were playing earlier in the year when he had that like five-part combo? Do you remember? I think it was Sacramento that he goes to like a like crossover behind, behind the, the back. back. It was, Sacramento, yep. Yep. was it Sacramento? The move was almost exactly like that and that he just blew by a guy. Like he get another big, he's off the dribble and the guy's like has no chance of guarding him. And then my other big note was he hit a three-pointer in this game. I think he only went one of three, was it? Uh, one of four from the three-point line. He's been a little bit of a reluctant three-point shooter, it seems, so far through World Cup qualifiers and, uh, and those games. He took four tonight, only made one of them. It's one of my big notes for him this year. We keep waiting for him to become a consistent three-point shooter. It's the one part of his offensive arsenal that hasn't been great. And he hit one tonight, but I didn't feel like he necessarily shot the ball well from deep or with confidence. Yeah, I agree with that. The three pointer is the three pointer is a weird thing because for a pretty substantial stretch over the last calendar year, he hasn't looked to shoot it with confidence. On the flip side, he has this thing to his shot where seemingly every time he needs it to be, particularly in the playoffs, it's there. So it's it is something I'm watching right now. Is he right. in some kind of funk with it? Is he overthinking it? But at yeah. some point, he's going to hit a stretch for a month or two where he gets back up to forty percent. It's something to watch for sure. I am under the belief that he didn't shoot it good over the second half of last season from three because his wrist was bothering him. Mm -hmm. I just think that was the case. He hurt his wrist early in the season. I think it was bothering him the rest of the year. I don't. I think that's a big reason why he didn't shoot it well from three. So I, I think it's something to track for sure. You know, th this summer, does he look like he's got a more consistent shot from three? Um, the rebounding is the other big standout for me only six rebounds tonight and like I said a lot of noteworthy where he just didn't go get them and honestly this was a game where I felt like Jokic never went above you know 70% you maybe you kind of expected it but I, maybe I expected 10 more percent from him or, or you know just from an effort but guess what it didn't matter and he probably sensed that um, so for him overall I kind of just give it a B the guy who stood out to me though Vasa Micic. Wow. We've criticized him over the last little bit about, you know, not necessarily loving, you know, the ball sticks with him, this or that. He was phenomenal tonight in this game, I thought. Absolutely phenomenal. In fact, he's the DraftKings Sportsbooks king of the game. Go ahead and pull hey. it up. 15. Look at that. 15 hey. points, 12 assists, uh, and like some really highlight level assists too, man. He he his passes were on point. Five of ten from the field, two of five from the three-point line, and he was a plus 20, almost a game high. Um, yeah, I thought he was, I was really impressed with him. what do you think today? Wind. Yeah, Meetsich. I was really impressed Basa with him also. Meetsich. Yep. Meetsich. Basa Meetsich. Meetsich. Okay. Yeah. I, I was really impressed with him too. I've been kind of seeing how his and Jokic's chemistry and the pick and roll has come along and they had some real nice hookups today in that pick and roll in that two man game. He, he had a smooth game. I thought limited his mistakes for the most part except he had like one of those Steph Curry behind the back passes that he just did not need to throw. He takes some unnecessary risks. <clears throat> Misich does, like that's for sure, but felt like he ran his team well. He was pretty in control. Um I I've just got confidence when Misich has the ball in his hands. Like I now you do. Good. Are you swinging back hard the other way now? Now now you're on to full confidence? I've I've 
feel like I've liked him more than you guys have, but um, I'm I, I just feel comfortable. I, I feel like he's got this calming sense to him when he's got the ball in his hands. The thing I liked about him today is obviously it's Netherlands. We get it, but he came out and played full intensity the whole way, right? And someone needed yeah. to obviously the 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 cover, the twenty four cover, twenty four point cover is not a given as we know. But he came out and he played, I thought, with intensity the whole way. Also, I'm told, you know, we might say, or our friends in Argentina might say, a magician with the ball. Uh, I'm told <laughs> for, for Central Europe, doctor is the term. So he's Mietzic, a doctor? Itzich was a doctor. Is that, wait, doctor. him specifically? Or that's what you say when any player is? I think like when a crafty guard is like carving you up. That's the the doctor? The doctor. Doctor. I love that. <laughs> I like it. I'm into it. I'm into the doctor. I could be wrong. We've got plenty of Serbians in the chat. Let me know. But he was awesome. He was so good today. Great understanding of when to call his number, when to get others involved. And that transition pass, was that bounce pass was ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he had a couple, I think, of ridic ridiculous passes where I was like, ooh, that was pretty <laughs> tasty. That was tasty right there, Vasa. Mm -hmm. um, it's yeah. funny. I've talked to people before who say that Jokic, when speaking in his native tongue, He's a lot more eloquent and even speaks in a lot of axioms and idioms. And one of the things I put this out on Twitter, but I'm watching these documentaries as I'm preparing, you know, obviously for our own sort of feature or documentary that we're making. And that's one of the things I've picked up is I don't know if it's just a translation thing because I'm reading subtitles or if it's just a thing in Serbia. It's probably a European thing in general, but a, Serp uh, a Serbian thing where people talk in so many uh, little idioms. And I had one today, somebody talking about um, Danilovic. One of Serb uh -huh. a Serbian legend, and they say something of him. If you put him in hot water, he would make a tea. Or <laughs> everyone, he would and make just, everyone a tea. He would make everyone a tea, and I just love that phrase. It's like the, I've never heard that in my life, and I was like, "What a great, great thing!" Could be used to describe Jokic too. You put him in hot water, and he'll make everyone a tea. <laughs> this is like when we were about to go on Serbian uh, national programming on the morning show. And we were just like, should we make up some stupid American <laughs> idiom that we should just say? <laughs> we should have done it. We, so the, here's a little behind the scenes. We went on RTS and then we're going on the TV for N1, which is the other one. And we're sitting there and we're like, you know, what would really make a splash. <laughs> like, yeah. if you just go on there and answer everything, you know, like. TV, TV is so formal. If you just go on there yeah. and answer everything like formally, like the way you want, not that memorable. If you go on there and just dick around, like, like, like well, the first bald eagle to the water is the first bald eagle back to the nest. Right? <laughs> what is, what is, yeah, what does that yeah. mean? The first eagle to the water is the first yeah. eagle to the nest. Would be such a great. They'd be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> as <laughs> as we say in Denver, yeah, that's right. <laughs> as we say in Denver, a beard is only worth its weight. Like what? <laughs> I don't know what this means. Um, but we didn't do that. If we go back, maybe we'll have to do it next time. So invite us at your own peril. Why don't we hit a break? On the other side, there were a couple other players that we should get to uh, from the Serbia team. This is part of what's cool about watching Team Serbia. And honestly, like full disclosure, I think we're all in the same boat. We're not really researching Team Serbia. We cover the Denver Nuggets. We're, we watch, But as we watch the games, you start to develop different opinions. For example, game mm -hmm. one. Uh, Yaramash, greatest player I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I just ex I expected oh, yeah. that guy to hit step back threes all the time. It uh, turns out we watched his best game ever. But there were yeah. some guys that stood out tonight for the first time, like to me at least for the first time, and I kind of want to give them a mention on the other side. Am I doing it, Wind? <laughs> I, I thought you said you were. I didn't. It was unclear. I don't know if we have reached a conclusion. Let's talk about Let's switch off. TV. Let's switch off. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Ivaca TV, the new GOAT in Colorado TV, because right now it's distressingly hard to get your favorite and uh, your local teams on your television. A couple of billionaires, their egos, they're in the way. But with Ivaca TV, you can bypass that. If you go to Ivaca.tv slash Colorado 10, that's Ivaca.tv slash Colorado 10, you and many other Coloradans can get Ivaca for $25 a month plus a $5 receiver fee. And actually right now, Colorado sports fans get $10 off per month for the first three months. Get your nuggets back, get your abs back, get exclusive content like the stuff we're cooking up here at DNVR. Get your Colorado sports back with Ivaca TV. One more time, that's Ivaca.tv slash Colorado 10. Big, big homies for us, guys. I'm telling you that documentary premiering on there, and I, we've seen a lot of people. So here's what's cool about Avaca. You want to watch the Nuggets? You want to watch the Avs? You want to watch DNVR? We're now in the tree. This is the holy trio. 
you get the holy trio of Nuggets, Avs, and DNVR. And my hope is that this documentary goes well enough and enough people are appreciative of what Ivaca has done for us in this partnership that they sign up for another one and another one and another one. So if you're on the fence about it, you're signing up and letting Ivaca know, post it on, on social. Hey, I signed up and this is why. Just might be mm-hmm. the thing that sends us back to Serbia again next summer or, or who knows, sometime soon. Or maybe Berlin. Maybe Berlin. Or maybe Berlin listening? in a week. Okay. I'd love to go back. Okay. The wait is almost over. Uh, new football season is just about to begin, so make sure you've downloaded DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app, because they are official betting partners of the NFL. Russell Wilson is in Denver. He just inked an extension or agreed to an extension, so he'll be here for the long haul. Don't miss his first season in Denver with DraftKings. New users can bet just $5 on any football game and get $200 in free bets instantly. And on opening night, they've got another can't-miss offer. If the team you bet on gets up seven points at any point in the game, you win. Even if they lose, DraftKings, I'm, listen, who am I to question a partner's business model? But they just love to give you money. They love to give it away. There's so Crazy. many ways to play, so many ways to win. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code DNVR to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is code DNVR, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official Sports betting partner of the NFL. You got to be 21 or older. You got to be in Colorado. The bonus is issued as free bets. Um, They come out in multiple free bets. Deposit and wagering restrictions apply. Eligibility in terms at DraftKings.com slash football terms. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-522-4700. I love Oh, do we have to put that one up as well? I love this. Uh, people in the chat already. There's so many, so much people already get the uh, the DNVR yeah. way. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love this one here. Give a man an assist with score two points, <laughs> teach him to assist and watch the ball pop. I like that one. <laughs> and then I love this one here from one of our guys, Seth, not Serbian. I still believe in Yaramaz four games into being a Serbia fan. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, Yaramaz is, is our guy forever and ever, like, he'll, he'll forever be our guy because of that game. And by the way, he had a nice step back tonight. I'll give him a little shout out. He I did. Yeah. Over the last couple of games, he hasn't stood out that much, although he's been solid. But tonight, he had another one of those step backs that was big. And you're like, oh man, maybe that's his game. Maybe he's just like a late shot clock bloomer. Off the bench, little spark. He loves the pressure. That's what he loves. He, got, he has to manufacture the pressure and let the time run out. Yeah. Uh, the guy I wanted to talk my guy Lucic has been a little bit quiet over the last couple of games as well. He hasn't really had some loud performances. The guy that stood out to me tonight, a guy I hadn't really noticed a whole lot of before tonight, was Vanya Marinkovic. Tonight he goes, uh, let's see, he had 18 points on five of eight shooting from the three-point line. He was a team high or game high plus 24 uh, and then contributed just a little bit in the rest of the, you know, all over the box score. They desperately need some three-point shooting. This team does. You're getting open looks. Tonight, he got set up, and he knocked him down. I was very impressed with him tonight. I was, too. Seemed like a guy who shouldn't be left open, and he was open plenty, 18 points. Looks like a sharpshooter to me, although I got a text from Voya. He says, no, uh-oh. It goes, up, it goes up and down. It goes up and down with Marinkovic, so we'll see. I, you know what, though? A lot of sharpshooters, that's how they are. They're streaky because yeah. you only take eight shots. And the difference sure. between five of eight and three of eight is just two, but it feels huge. So I think but that's he, just a shooter's trait. Sure, sure. But he was the guy tonight. Every time it the, the result was him open, you're, you were feeling good for sure. Who stood out to you, yeah. Harrison? Kalinich also stood out yep. to me. Yeah. He's, yep. he's got a nice-looking jumper too, man. I mean, you put – Micic and Jokic in the two-man game, and you got uh, you know Lucic patrolling, you know doing whatever, and then you can space the four with uh, Marinkovic and uh, and uh, who are we just talking about? And Kalinic, right? Like boom, you got two knockdown shooters next to those guys. The Serbian role players are so smart, man. Yeah. These guys are such high IQ players. And yeah, it's like such a it's such a stereotype that I fall into a lot. Oh, like international players, so high IQ. They just know where to be. They know how to play. They play unselfish. But that's a, that applies to all these guys on Serbia, I feel like. All of but them I'm telling such- you, though, Harrison, there's a reason for this, because I think you get some similar things at NCAA and, and what it is that I don't think people fully understand. And I'm, this is not a value proposition. This is a stylistic thing is that in the NBA, the players are the most important. They have the loudest voice. They kind of get to run things. 
you know, and they just have that freedom. So I don't know that I, it's funny because watching these games, I almost feel like it is less of a basketball IQ thing and more to your point, a trust issue, like a, a connection issue. Like these guys play yeah. more connected in large part because it's, there's the authority above them to say, if you don't, you're not going to play, you're going to come out. Whereas in the NBA, it's just not like that. We know the stars, the max contract players, they're going to play. And, and, and so it's just a bit, a little bit of a stylistic difference. Yeah. And, and also it, it's, these guys, you know, they're playing for their clubs. Jokic is in the NBA. Michic is playing in Turkey. They're right. playing all over the world together. They come together on Team Serbia. And look, these guys have only been playing as a team for the last month or so, last three weeks. They're clicking. Like You yeah. can see the chemistry already. You know, they just come together. It's like, oh, no, we know how to play with each other. We know how to space the floor. We know how to play off Jokic and Micic. It's it's fun to watch. And I yeah. feel like the role players have more – they've got a little bit of more to them, right? They're not all so neatly boxed in. Like Kalinic, you know, obviously was shooting well. But that one pass he had to the left corner where he was on the drive, he got swallowed up. But he just kind of snuck one out and around. I mean – there you go. High IQ glue guy. Seemed like it to me. Not going to pretend to be an expert after a few games. Tweeted that he's got that dog in him based off the reaction. <laughs> that apparently is correct. He does have that dog in him. Yarmaz has that dog in him too. You just know it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I mean, Yarmaz, he you does, know, man. He does. He, he does have that dog in him. Um, I have to give a little bit of shine to, to this guy, Worthy Dijon. I'm looking him up Ooh. right now. That guy was incredible tonight uh, for, for the Netherlands. He was 11 of 14. He had 28 points on 14 shots, 11 of 14, including six of eight from the three-point line. He was absolutely flames. And I'm looking him up on Wikipedia now, so I'm something of an expert myself at the moment. I looked him up too, yeah. So he actually has a ton of accolades in the oh, Belgium yeah. League and the Dutch League. He's like uh, the Steph Curry of those leagues, apparently, because I'm just looking at it. He was a champion this year, finals MVP. I love this one. Defensive player of the year. Also, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this guy pretty much did what Giannis couldn't do in the NBA. Hey, NBA hey. Cha league champion, MVP, and defensive player of the year. Thomas Welsh has a defensive player of the year, so it gets. It oh, gets I wild love that. Out there. Hey, which you know, was you know, Thomas Welsh? Uh, what's up? What league is Thomas Welsh in? He's in Taiwan somewhere, I believe. Oh, in Taiwan. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. But he did win. Uh, De Jong was fearless. And I, oh, De Jong, I'm told. Guys, I don't know how to pronounce these things. We have a different alphabet. De, De, De Jong was fearless. And, you know, obviously we, we kind of joked it was more about Serbia's intensity when Jokic was on the floor, how it had been flowed. But really, the closeness of this game, this not being a 23-and-a-half point game, was almost entirely contingent upon him being on the floor and getting buckets. And my understanding too is that Netherlands, as you know, not a great team as it is, is also down their leading scorer from qualifiers in this game. So De Jong really had to just step into that mm -hmm. role. So hat tip to the fella. He played. Uh, he balled out. He balled I, out I also love this. If you go, so he has most value MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Finals MVP, all this. And then if you go to the Dutch league, he's a three-time champion. Also wins the Dutch Cup, Defensive Player of the Year, Most Improved Player, five times All-Star. This guy has some accolades, so I guess I shouldn't have been surprised if I would have known anything about the Dutch team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I see this question here came in from J.K. Walrus. I imagine a lot of people listening are wondering the same thing. Who are like maybe the top five teams in this tournament? Slovenia is, is right up there. Team Greece, uh, Slovenia featuring obviously Vlako Chanchar as well as Luka Doncic as his sidekick. You've also got Team Greece with Giannis Atentacumpo and his brothers. Also former Nuggets great Kostas Papa Nicolaou. Um, you've got the Lithuanian team who lost narrowly to Slovenia. The French mm -hmm. team who somehow got <laughs> clapped by the German team. Um, who else? Who else do we have? We got Spain who's always good. Mm -hmm. Germany's um, got a, a got a good team. Um, they they beat France, but they've got Franz Wagner. They've got Daniel Tice. They've dude, got Franz Dennis Wagner Schroeder. Is a good player, man, he's like a legitimately good player. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they got Schroeder too, so they got they got a squad. They got a big three. That's for sure. And I don't I don't know if they're one of the best, but I'm kind of wondering maybe don't sleep on Israel as well. They had a good showing this morning, and and Denny. Denny Avdia, yeah. is that how he says yeah, Avdia. Yeah, yeah, you can you can probably sleep on Israel. I can probably sleep on them. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah Heritage's yeah. home team. Um, and then I would say I, I watched Croatia today, and I was I thought they were. Gal McKell is a little past his prime. 
<laughs> I thought Croatia was pretty good as well. I mean, they've got Saric, they've got Zubats, they got Boyan oh, yeah. Bogdanovic. Yeah. So, like, they have some NBA players too, even if yeah. they got took an L this morning. Um, so those are them. And that brings me really to one of the things I wanted to talk about. It was fun seeing all of us today tweeting about Eurobasket. And it was cool. I thought um, D-Line had such a great tweet earlier where he was like, I'm so lucky that like I've, I've been turned on to Eurobasket or whatever. And this is how I feel. You know, there's something a little hipster about it. You know, there's a lot of things where you're like, I would love to get into that, but I don't know how. Like, what's the entry point for getting into something? It feels too overwhelming. I feel like in a lot of ways, our Serbia trip was that for us, for Eurobasket, and really for World Cup and, and, and for, you know, international competitions. I don't know if I'm going to get into Euro League. I don't, I kind of, this does, this seems almost separate of that from me. So I don't know if I'll get into the club mm-hmm. aspect of European basketball, especially since it runs up against the NBA, who has the time. But for these summer competitions, it's been so fun getting an entry point to it. And I'm, I'm like watching these games. Even the non-Serbia games today have been fun. And yesterday, I've, I've, I've kind of enjoyed it. Do you guys, are you in the same boat? This feels like a fun entry point to something you didn't really have an entry point before. It's the perfect summer activity. Like, you know, <laughs> go, go in a wash park in Denver. Like go in, okay. uh, hanging out, hanging out in the Highlands, watching Eurobasket. Like that, that's my top three activities in the summer. Uh, but also the games are quick. They don't take yeah. long. You just fly through them. There's not a ton of stoppages. Basketball is fun to watch. You know, a couple guys in each game. It's, it's the perfect casual watch for the summer. I'm really enjoying this. I coughed up for uh, the ESPN plus, as I told you. Right. Well, yeah. I didn't do yeah, it yeah, just to too. watch Jokic. You know what I mean? Right. So let's do I, mean, this I would have, but yeah. I mean, I would have for sure. But I said, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. And I've just been the last two days just kicking my feet up on the coffee table, watching hoops, waiting for the show to start. It's a good way mm-hmm. to live. I'm enjoying <laughs> these games for sure. And it is fun to have some like NBA all happens at once. You have East Coast and West Coast start time. So there's basically two games a night. Tournaments, though, are all day. It's kind of fun. Like today, little peek behind the curtain i got to lay in bed all day today with my laptop watching these documentaries that i'm trying i'm getting through for you know for some research with the game on in the background perfect day this is a perfect day at the office for me man i had so much fun Uh, and the the joy of it is it sucks from a basketball perspective that they play these back-to-backs but as a viewer guess what 12 hours from now we get another Jokic game it's a good saturday (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of like March Madness, but better. It is very much a March Madness feel for us today. Very, very, very much a March Madness. And, you know, there's another week of pool play and then we get into the elimination round. And I don't do we know what day is the elimination round? I know you've got games tomorrow. You have a game Monday and Tuesday. Does it start immediately after that, like Thursday or Friday? Either way, into the weekend. And what's fun about this is the DMVR bar is opening on the 10th and the 11th. Is when Which is what? I don't have a calendar in front of me. That's and, in a week. Next oh, so weekend. it's Saturday. Here's what I love about it. DNVR bar at the moment set to open next Friday for our grand opening. That means when Serbia plays on either Saturday or Sunday, guess what we get to do? Watch it at the DNVR bar. I can't wait for it. We're going to actually be able to get together and come down to the bar. We got to see, um, you know, try some food and be out there. I think people are going to be shocked by how different the DNVR bar looks. When you when you come down to it, it's a it's noticeably different. First thing that stands out, like twice as many TVs. Wow, I thought we had a good TV set up before too. <laughs> Me too, man. But there's one, there's one. You see them now, and you go, oh yeah, those probably should have always been there. There's like yeah, a whole yeah. row that just changes yeah. the whole thing for sure. Yeah. And the thing about it is, is we did a good thing and, and we'll have to balance this, but you know, if there was a nuggets and abs game on, it would be like 80% nuggets. And then a couple abs ones, if it was a, a nuggets mm-hmm. party. Now I think it's going to be such that you could easily have just as many nuggets games on with equally as many abs games on and Everybody will be able to clearly see it. So I was kind of excited for that. Um, before we go to our second break and get to the Donovan Mitchell stuff, I did just want to ask tomorrow they have Czech Republic. Um, what do you have, Wynn? Did you have something? I've got one more note on the game, but, but keep okay. going. Oh, I was just going to uh, say, what are, what are you hoping to see tomorrow that you didn't see today, or, or what are kind of your expectations on the second half of this back-to-back? I'm just looking for Serbia to put Czech away earlier tomorrow because, you know, it is a back-to-back. 
they're in the easiest group, Serbia. They got a great job with the group, so they should go undefeated, and no team should really give them a lot of trouble. But they they got to put Czech away in the first half, so you know Yoke can take another fourth quarter off. I thought I've seen at times really good team defense from Serbia over the last handful of games. Yeah, not necessarily tonight. Not necessarily. No, not. To, but I think that that was a focus thing. And I thought in that mm-hmm. run in the fourth, maybe they picked themselves to cover. My God. But I thought that the defense was really, really good. Now, again, it's Netherlands. So the question then, how often, how effectively do they deploy that defense tomorrow? Better competition off a of back-to-back. I'm really interested to watch that because that to me, I think maybe the sharpshooting will come and go, but they have the talent. They have the hub. They have the best player. So if they can play really good defense, then I'm really, really buying them as not just a, a top dog in a weak group, but really excited to see the rest of the run. Yeah, the defense I think is an interesting one because I'm with you. It is it it's one of the ingredients for them to win. I think it's mm-hmm. hard to show defense too much when it's um uh, when it's like bad teams and you're yes. not it's not that competitive. It's hard to be like totally locked in. The thing I'm most interested in seeing is the ball popping. We we see it with this team a little bit, but we haven't seen it like strung together entire quarters where you're just like, wow, this team is perfectly in sync. And I kind of want to see if that happens as well as I would like to see Jokic get the ball inside a little bit more. It's hard to do. The spacing in Eurobasket is less than the NBA. The court's just wider. The rules allow for it, what have you. So I think it's, it's it can be harder to get the ball inside, but the team still kind of goes away from it a little bit more than I would like. And I'd like to see them find Jokic and I'd like to see Jokic be more dominant on some of those post-ups tomorrow. Again, wasn't needed tonight, but it's just something I would like to see. Yeah. Um, the the one the one last thing I got from the game is we talked. I think that was on yesterday's show. Is Michael Malone going to be watching this tournament? Is he going to mm. be talking to Coach Pesic? Here, yeah. here's one thing Michael Malone can learn from Coach Pesic: when you've got a big lead in the fourth quarter, you don't always have to panic and put <laughs> the MVP back into the game especially when you're on the first night of a back-to-back passage. He didn't go back to Jokic tonight, you know, Netherlands clawed back into the game. They even, you know, I think got to within single digits in the second half, 10 point lead or so in the fourth quarter. He didn't panic. He didn't panic and go back to Jokic. Yeah. But the Netherlands are like the G league ignite. I think, I think Malone might The Nuggets have have done this thing against the thunder. I know, but the the thunder are better than the G league ignite. This is my point. Like it's, I mean, the competition listen, in Eurobasket is so unbalanced that which team has really, Lindy Waters the third though that changes the whole. That's so true. I do have two more notes. I actually forgot. Um, w- one is the multicolored basketball absolutely slaps. I actually think this is a flaw in the NBA because you know the ABA ball was the goat, ball, the goat basketball, red, white, and blue. Because when somebody would like finger roll it, it just looks so sexy. Yeah. Like you see it all spit it off the glass. It just looks so sexy. The FIBA ball or the Euro basketball has that too. The international ball, it has the white lines. So when a guy like rolls it off the glass, it just looks so good. Nobody? Yeah. Man, no, it, 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 looks, it, it, looks, it, looks, it looks fine. It looks no, I, I, strong, I strongly agree with that take. Uh, uh, who was the fella on Croatia? The, the old school man. I'm blanking on his name. The guard. He's like 37 years old. Uh, he was the one who's hitting the hook shots and going to the bank oh, shot. Um, uh, is it Simon? Was that what yes, it is. Simon? Simon. Simon? Yeah. yeah, he's the perfect him plus this ball. Oh yeah, he had. You're right. He had Harrison the hook shots, in that, dude. Oh, that guy is a vibe, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, he definitely whipped ass today. He was dope. Yeah. I'm telling you, there were some dope players today. It was fun. Um, and then lastly, the animation on the broadcast for the score. Uh, is horrible. It's like an eight second animation. <laughs> Have you guys noticed? Every time yeah. somebody scores, it's there's like, like a two. graphic, and then there's like an explosion, and then it's plus two, and then another explosion. <laughs> you only check the score when somebody scores, and like you have to look at that thing for eight seconds before you find out what the score <laughs> That's is. True. It's, it's That's driving true. me a little crazy. So yeah. I have a very niche detail, but it's driving me nuts. All right, let's take a break. On the other side, Donovan Mitchell out of the Northwest Division. He went to the New York Knicks. Or did he? We'll talk about it on the other side. (laughs) 
Uh, Breckenridge Brewery has a birthday coming up. 32 years young to celebrate Breck Brewers throwing a weekend-long hoot nanny. Kick off the fall with live music, food, beer, of course, and games October 8th and 9th at their Littleton location. They've got national acts like the Spin Doctors, local favorites, Railroad Earth, rocking out. So stay tuned to everything DNVR for hoot nanny giveaways leading up to October 8th. Check out the link in the description or go to breckbrew.com for more details and the entire artist lineup. Uh, At Sexy Pizza. Sexy Pizza, they're your one-stop shop for pizza in Denver. 13 years in the Denver community, Sexy Pizza is as local as it gets. It's a hand-tossed deck oven pizza with made-from-scratch each morning dough. They've got great pizzas. They've got great salads. They've got really good sides. They've got desserts as well. You can order from any of their four Denver locations, Cap Hill, South Pearl, Jefferson Park, and Park Hill. They've also got a location in Trinidad, Colorado. Check out Sexy Pizza today. Go to www.sexy.pizza. I like that our guy Surgeon, our host from Sambor, he's, he's calling for a Sambor shuffle. You know what's funny, though? The Sambor shuffle is almost a break, in, break glass in case of emergency shot. I don't know if they need it tomorrow. When did the, when did the Sambor happen against Greece? Fourth quarter, it's, final it's minute and a half? That's when they needed it most. Game when they line. needed it most, there he was with the Sambor. So I don't know yeah. if we're going to need a Sambor tomorrow. I Czech, hope, I Czech is not. better than Netherlands. They'll right. make Serbia work more than Netherlands, but it, it should be an easy dub. <laughs> Hang on. Can you check? It. Do we have a DraftKings line for tomorrow yet? I already checked. It's not up yet. It's not up yet. Okay, <laughs> what a consummate professional. This is the most we've ever covered the game of basketball in the offseason. And like we've got a comment there complaining about the lack of snake drafts. I just, <laughs> I, 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 I've been hearing the heat that we've been getting for lack of snake drafts. I, I just want I want the people to know I hear the complaints. Can we do a real talk? PHNX Sun started snake drafting. Yeah, it just it got less sexy. I don't know. It got less know. sexy. Like, We've got to find know. the next just mindless off-season activity yeah. to do on the show. We tried the tier <laughs> thing, but we stuck at doing tears. We turned out our the tier thing really yeah, is just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> the so worst. Funny. It's the worst segment in this <laughs> show's history. <laughs> but we'll keep doing it. Um, Donovan Mitchell finally gets traded. You guys remember <clears throat> yesterday. Harrison Wynn hosting the show, and we did the scout. 15 scouts predict different things. And one of them was, where does Donovan Mitchell play? And 14 of them, first of all, they all missed on Jokic. Let's find out. Should we trust them? Let's see how their first prediction that Mm -hmm. came true or not, how it went. 14 of them said the New York Knicks. One of them said the Utah Jazz. And then shortly after that was published, Donovan Mitchell gets traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mm. Total X factor. Nobody saw coming. Those scouts uh, didn't see it coming. Scouts did not see that one coming. Not very plugged in there, scouts. Uh, Vote, what did you think when you first saw this trade come through? Well, despite ESPN's best efforts, <laughs> Donovan Mitchell will not be going to will not be going to New York. I my first reaction was, what would the tweet have read if he was going to New York? Versus the tweet that just read, Donovan Mitchell has been traded. <laughs> I think it, we, it would have had a little more copy in there. But you know what? Do you think there's like a, do you think there's a, yeah, do you think there's a hype video just in the ESPN vault that we'll never see? Oh, like, for sure. Are you Spike kidding Spike Lee, like Derek Jeter, Patrick yeah. Ewing, welcome to New York, Donovan Mitchell. That that we'll it, never see. We'll never see on it. The piano. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah J- sure. Jay-Z. Yeah, I, I think Dioso Blanco, though, has, has it right. Cleveland's going to be a fun team to watch. They could be a very, very good team. And, you know, a lot of the reaction was about, including some of my own internal, was about Utah's Hall, particularly after the Gobert trade. But there's a really fun basketball side of this. Forget team building. Just the player, they're a very fun player, went to a very good team. And I think they're better. I mean, we'll, probably. So. so here's what's interesting. Cleveland was one of the feel-good stories of last year. Now, they ran into some injury luck. You know, some things fell apart from them. But they were, up until that point, the feel-good story, surprise story of the year. Very lovable team, young, what, what have you. Donovan Mitchell, I've never been the biggest fan of his. I think he's a very good player. And his peaks are obviously high. We saw it in the bubble. He was as good, if not better, than Murray for most of that series, all the way up until the very end. 
he's a really high peaks player, but I've never really liked him as a guy that I would want to build a team around. I love Mobley. I'm a big believer in him. I love Jared Allen. I know he's not young, but I love him as a role player. I like Darius Garland a lot, even though I think that he is a player that you have to, it's like hard to build around him because of his weaknesses. Donovan Mitchell there. I, this is a trade you have to make if you're Cleveland. They traded future aspects, assets. They traded guys that weren't going to contribute. And in theory, you add an all-star to a team that already has two all-stars. In theory, that makes sense. I don't know if I'm in love with it as much as everyone else seems to be. Mm -hmm. I think they're very good. I think they have a chance and maybe it all comes together. But part of me looks at this and goes, Darius Garland's really good with the ball in his hands. Donovan Mitchell's not exactly the best passer. Neither of those guys can play a lick of defense. I don't know if that's like a championship caliber team. Maybe that wasn't the goal. I don't know. But I look at it and I go, good move. But I'm not buying Cleveland other than being what they were last year, which was a really good, fun team that wasn't a true contender. Yeah. There's still one more move that Cleveland definitely has to make to get into that next tier with Milwaukee, Boston, Philly. They're definitely not in that tier. They're definitely not there. But – just like Minnesota did when they traded for Rudy Gobert, they're going for it. Cleveland's going for it. And I love teams that go for it. But, I agree. Um, I agree with this. This is like, a good take. This is what you got to do, man. Um, you've got a nice young core. Go for it. Try to try to make something happen here. Try to get the people going. Um, you know, you can have these long, drawn-out rebuilds. And, yeah, like Cleveland, may, maybe – the right decision if you're actually like trying to win one NBA title one day is really draw out the rebuild. Um, keep adding young players that are on that timeline of a Garland, of a Mobley. Try to find that perfect wing that complements those guys really, really well, better than Mitchell does. But they're just like, let's just go for it. Let, let's just yeah. make some noise. Let, let's just cash our chips in. Don Mitchell, he's an all star. You know he's he's our best player now. Let's let's just do it. And just like the Timberwolves did with Rudy Gobert, the Cavs are going for it. And I gotta I gotta give a tip of the hat to them for that. I also think Ben Hawk makes a great point in the chat there. I mean, Okoro, Mobley, Jared Allen, these guys are all still on the team. So it's, it's as far as ammunition on the defensive side, they've got plenty to work with. So mm -hmm. maybe this is worth the risk. But yeah, I. I'm with Win. More and more teams trying, I think, philosophically. I, I just find myself on board with that. More important to Denver is Utah Jazz have completely taken themselves out of contention this year in any way. Like I don't yeah. they're they're gonna be a terrible team, I think. Um they do have some spare part. I mean, my number one thing I look at, there's twofold. One is that Utah clearly have stacked assets. It's the new way you do it in the NBA. They've got, I don't know, 19 draft picks or something over the next seven years. I don't know. I made this point on Locked On NBA today, but I don't know if – is this the new normal where every star player commands five draft picks? I mean, that's basically what it was, three draft it, picks. It comes in five. phases. I think it comes in phases. We're, we're in a period right now where that's the case, yes. I agree, Harrison, but here's what's interesting. if we, Because I think you, you're right that we're just at a, a moment of inflated draft picks you yeah. know, for these guys, but they just pulled off <clears> two of those. They just traded two superstars. And it might end up being one of those things that in a few years from now, it's like when the Golden State Warriors got Kevin Durant. That's not a replicable process because not every year does the salary cap get boosted at the perfect moment like that. It might be a thing like that where we look back and go, how many draft? They got 11 draft picks for two stars. Now the going rate is two stars get you five draft picks. They might have just loaded up at the exact perfect moment. And I don't think that mm -hmm. matters to Denver in the short term because I don't think that is a team that is one, two, or maybe even three years away from contending, even though you can never see that far. But I do look at it and go, later on down the line, they certainly are set up to be able to build a contender if things break their right way. So um, just something to, that, that's just one of my big takeaways from Denver's perspective. Utah cashed in. They got to get credit, you know, and we were joking, poking fun of giving them best offseason because they waved the white flag, but they obviously did a good job retreating here. And I do think you're right that this is they've got plenty to work with in terms of the structure of a rebuild. I, I think we're in the point right now where the lack of a Kevin Durant in Golden State or a team maybe built just like that encourages teams like Cleveland and teams yeah, like, like Minnesota that. to say, yeah, sure. Four or five picks. Am I going to get a better window than right now? So 
uh, I, I enjoy that, but I also think that's a big factor in this seemingly part of the cycle. I want to, the more interesting thing, Harrison, though, to me is actually you've got Mike Conley, you got Boyan Bogdanovich, you've yeah. got uh, Jordan Clarkson, who I'm not a big fan of, but you they have some players now that could swing a title. And to me, that's the more interesting thing here. It doesn't make sense to hold on to Mike Conley. It doesn't make sense to hold on to Boyan Bogdanovich. I'm curious to see where those guys go and what teams are able to snag them because they could end up being like, we're looking at teams right now and we say, for example, Dallas, not a true contender in my estimation, but do they pull off a move that gets them a boy on right. that just happens to complete a thing, you know, something right. for them or Phoenix or somebody like that. That's kind of what I look at right now. As I say, Utah might actually end up swinging the championship this year with the moves oh, they're yeah. left to make. They'll, they'll trade all three of those guys. Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt. I actually was really trying to find a way or find one of these guys to put on Denver. I couldn't. Like, I don't think any of these guys are, are Denver targets. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I can't. I I can't see any of them. Um, but yeah, there's some rumors that Phoenix wants Bogdanovich. <laughs> Rashad, Lakers are literally interested in every player. They have like three good players. They desperately need players. <laughs> so yeah, they... the, the average player that comes on the market, he might be able to start for the Lakers. You know, for sure, for sure, that for sure, there are like three or four. There, how many players would start? I mean, Mike Conley would start. Boyan Bogdanovich would probably start. I mean, he, he, you know, he's a piece there. So Jordan Clarkson would play very high rotation. Malik Beasley yeah. would play a lot of rotation minutes for them. Like, there's, yeah, there's players that out one's there. probably going to happen. By the way, is he he's still with Clutch, right? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right, and he's. A, Family is LA, you know. Yeah, we'll see it. Oh god, that's gonna. Oh man, the full like hatred of Malik Beasley coming yeah. full circle. Full circle. Oh. full circle. The thing though, I I agree with you guys that none of these guys are are great fits. I still think it's worth asking the question, just in terms of good faith process on our end. Like, was is this the opportunity cost of of the Peyton Watson move, particularly the Jamichael Green and a pick? to get another rookie when maybe you could be in conversations for some of these guys. Now, I don't know if this is the best example, but still just something to think about. Yeah. yeah. So the, I, go ahead. The, 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 the natural trade here though, is Russell Westbrook and a pick or two for one or two of these guys. Like that's the next trade we're waiting on. Right. Are we, if you're Utah, you don't think you do that. What are you doing with Russell Westbrook when he's here? Are you going to John Wall him and just like tell him yeah. not to show up to the arena? Yeah, it's exactly on, what man. you're doing with Come him. On, and you're getting two Lakers draft picks. Come on, man. I mean, we'll see. I, I hope that's not the, the cycle of this. I kind of hate the NBA in this one way that that's the way you do it. You try until your window closes slightly. And rather than just try to like restructure, you completely tear it down and sell your role players to contenders. Usually the same ones, the Lakers. Um, so I just kind of hate this. I'm so sick of the NBA cycle. I'm so sick of it. Um, but it is, I do think that is going to end up being a pretty big storyline last, but not least for today. Um, Kale, pull up the tweet vote, vote. We sent you that, that somebody sent the vote. Cause this was the greatest thing. One of the cool things is, you know, we obviously love Jokic. We've gotten to love Serbia. Do you not have it? Is, Kale, is that what you, I can no one sent the tweet. <laughs> okay. I'll do it right now. You, you, you do a little, uh... um, but one of the cool things is that, you know, we have, um, you know, we've enjoyed kind of immersing ourselves in Serbian culture. And it's been funny because we've seen how much people have, em have embraced that, just the idea that we are like into it. Um, but it's the same way coming back. Like all these Serbians are now Nuggets fans. And it's kind of cool to see so much so and no, never truer than this tweet that came in today from somebody from Serbia who has been a Lakers fan for some reason. It's because the Lakers are so popular that everyone just kind of like. I, I, everybody just kind of shoves it down. But this guy says, for 30 years, I never thought I could support any other team but the Lakers, but damn it. This whole mile high love is way too special to stay immune to it. I loved it. I loved it. I don't look, I'm not telling people where your fandom has to go or what have you. I get that roots run deep for fandom and it doesn't always make sense why you like who you like. All I'm going to say though is I do feel this really exciting and fun kinship between serbia and denver and it like really does yeah. feel real and awesome and, and 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 something special so it's cool that somebody that's even a laker fan who we hate is still feeling the love i think that was a cool that that, that tweet made my day tweet of the day if dnvr is able to do this just think of the potential think of the world problems we could solve just from this <laughs> podcast think of the the international issues we could just hammer out 
Yeah, I love it. I do think a lot about, so I'm actually watching this documentary right now on um, the partisan team in 91 and 92, who again, during sanctions actually had to leave and go to a suburb of Madrid to play their games. And it was cool because Madrid kind of like embraced that team and, and like made them their own and they became big fans of partisan. And it was a cool story and I was watching it and I'm thinking some parallels there between both us going that direction and them going this direction in a way that's kind of cool sports at their best. That's what they do. They bridge that gap. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we're going to be back tomorrow. Guess what? Saturday show. Yes, sir. We're going to be back tomorrow doing a, hopefully a winner's lounge as team Serbia takes on the Czech Republic. Set your reminders, hit that little like button. We'll see you guys on the other side.